I'm a fan of EverQuest. That shouldn't be a surprise if you just... I played EverQuest since the launch of Canark in 2000. And over the past 22 years, I've spent a lot of my life in EverQuest. Too much, possibly. But in those 22 years, I've also taken many diversions. I continue to return to EverQuest because no game has quite captured me the way that has. But that doesn't mean I haven't had fun elsewhere. And that's what this video is about. Oh, fuck. Is, is this the video that makes the EverQuest community turn on me and uh, and burn, burn my channel to the ground? Wait, please don't do that. Um, I have a heart. I still like the game. Now, some of you may agree with me with some of the things that I'm going to say here in this video, and some of you may not. But I would like to know from you if you are completely devoted to EverQuest right now, or if there have been other games that you've played, that you've enjoyed, that have a special place in your heart, like some of these do for me. For this video, we're going to talk about games that I have personally really enjoyed, and we're going to talk about them in, with three different pillars in mind. Social engagement, setting and lore, and then time investment versus reward. Social engagement covers everything from grouping to chatting with people to crafting. Really, if you ever ask me what makes EverQuest EverQuest, I'd probably say it's the social engagement. It's that need to be social with other players and need to work together towards common goals. I think that's what makes the game what it is to me and that's what left such a huge impression on me for so many years and why I can proudly say that of every MMO I've played, the friends that I've kept the longest are from EverQuest. Setting and lore should be pretty self-explanatory. It's really how well the story, if there is one, and connects to the lore of the world and how immersive that feels. And can you get into it? Can you enjoy it? The time investment versus reward is gonna be the trickiest one of these because I feel like it might be more personal. Everyone has a different calculation on what is acceptable for your time investment for the rewards you get. And I've noticed over the years that that's changed for me even. What's a good investment for me 10 years ago or five years ago or even a year ago pre YouTube is different. In fact, my greatest stumbling block to playing EverQuest right now is just not having enough time to get the kind of reward out of the game that I want. YouTube takes up a shit ton of time, y'all. Now these games are not gonna be shocking. I don't have any secret MMO that I'm hiding under, under the tree waiting for you. If you've been around the MMO space, you've heard about the games that are out there. There's not a whole lot of new stuff out there that's thriving. I will say that there are plenty of games on the horizon that might be able to fill that EverQuest size hole but we don't have any clear updates on when those games will be released. Some of them are kickstarted, some of them are from big developers, but we don't really have a whole lot of information on when they might be able to come and alleviate this endless cycle of starting EverQuest and quitting EverQuest and starting EverQuest and quitting EverQuest. And oh my God, I've been doing this for 22 years. The first is perhaps the biggest MMO and or at least the one that's getting the most press right now. Uh, the the best press right now. Final Fantasy XIV is a truly social MMO with a twist. Most of the loading process can be done solo, but throughout the main story, you are routinely thrust into group and even small raid situations, often through a random group tool. I know the mention of that tool is sacrilege for many. Uh, it's, it's a common theme in a lot of this. Final Fantasy XIV seems to go the way of many MMOs. The option to be social is there, but it is not essential. However, Difficulty ramp up in some of the dungeons can make at least some communication necessary, which is honestly something I really appreciate. Now the setting, the setting may be off-putting for some. This is not Tolkien inspired the way EverQuest, Warcraft, Warhammer, or so many other fantasy games are. This is Final Fantasy. It's its own setting. And to many, it's beautiful, enthralling, and rewarding. It's a world that has a lot to offer, but this was perhaps the biggest difficulty for me personally in adjusting to the game. It was the setting. It was in particular the NPCs you fought. The plump dragons with small heads and the living cacti didn't necessarily fit my experiences with fantasy, but perhaps that was a good thing. It expanded my definition of the fantasy genre in great ways and I'd recommend giving it a chance. Final Fantasy XIV is one of the best single player stories you'll find in a game, let alone an MMO. 
It does suffer a bit in the beginning and absolutely leans into the chosen one tropes, but I found myself invested not long into playing. If we move on to time and reward, our third and final pillar. Of all the games on this list, I think Final Fantasy XIV has the best balance for me in my current stage of life. I feel like I can earn more by investing more time, but I do not feel pressured to do so. I feel like a one hour play session is valuable, but so is a seven hour one. That's a tough balance to find, and I think Final Fantasy XIV has done so well by giving incremental improvements alongside deep systems that range from gear upgrades to cosmetics. You won't lack for things to do, but the game will still be rewarding if you're casual. So the next game on the list is perhaps one of the best purchases you can make because you get to play it forever for one price. Guild Wars 2. Well, Guild Wars 2, like Final Fantasy XIV, is about options when it comes to being social from my experience. My first playthrough of the base game, I don't think I interact with anyone beyond a few hellos here and there, but that doesn't mean the game doesn't have social aspects. In fact, there are loosely social events throughout up to 60 people working toward a common event goal, think public quest. So while it's not necessary to group at all times, there are opportunities to do so. As for setting, Guild War 2 may be the only game on the list to challenge Final Fantasy XIV for personal story that is accessible to all and is arguably one of, if not the key aspects for the PvE part of the game. The story is built to have emotional impact and is character focused, like a single player game or like Final Fantasy XIV. The lore on which the story rests may not be as fleshed out as a later game on this list or as long standing as that in Final Fantasy. 14, but it still holds its own and it comes through organic exploration. It leads to a world that feels rich and interesting. Time and Reward is an area where Guild Wars 2 shines. It has positive reinforcement for advancement even in small increments, with story missions often taking 10 to 15 minutes to complete. Levels to gain, mastery points, map completion, and more. There's just a lot you are able to do, and not all of it takes that long. Guild Wars 2 rewards you for your time. It's not just PvE either. There is structured PvP that can be completed quickly, with perhaps the best battlegrounds I've played, second only to World of Warcraft, and then large scale world versus world, not unlike the next game on our list, which can be time consuming but rewarding for those who enjoy it. Our final game on the list is Elder Scrolls Online. If Guild Wars 2 is a great purchase, Elder Scrolls Online is a close second, because as a free to play title, this game may have one of the best pricing models that I've seen. You get a ton of game without spending anything more than the box price. So as for the social, this is soloable, but with options. Sensing a theme here, that's kind of how these MMOs work nowadays, for better or worse. ESO leans a bit more heavily into the solo experience, in my opinion, than the other games in this list, though. Often in my countless hours of ESO, I felt like I was playing Elder Scrolls 6 not an MMO, until you go into a city or engage in PvP. Grouping for PvE exists, but I never felt compelled to do it, but I think that it's largely because I was casual. There are many dungeons throughout ESO's expansive world, and they present exciting and unique challenges. I personally never got into it as much as other games on this list, largely due to the non-traditional class assignments, but if you can suspend your EverQuest brain and lean into the combat, the dungeons can be a rewarding experience. Setting. You know, it's, it's Elder Scrolls. If you like Elder Scrolls, you'll like this game. It's got a sometimes more mature storyline and there are things to discover all over. It's a lore hunter's delight and perhaps one of the best parts of the game. The world is rich and inviting, if a bit overwhelming. You never know what secrets you'll find by talking to an NPC who popped onto your path or reading a book that you find in a dungeon. And until we get some actual like announcements on the next Elder Scrolls game, you can get your fix in ESO. It does a good job. Time and reward, well, ESO doesn't quite hit the balance for me of time versus reward because it often feels like a gear grind can be a bit all or nothing. I found myself relying on daily login items for gear because the things I was doing in game didn't lend itself to the gear sets I needed to have even the slightest chance in PvP. This may be one of the biggest gripes I have with the game needing to go to external websites to find the right build, the right gear, and even remotely compete. This appeals to a specific type of player, and that's just not me. I'll research to get the final edge, but I'm not interested in researching just to play. Now, what kind of video would this be if we didn't at least have an honorable mentions section? We gotta get some other games in here, y'all. There's other things that you could be playing. The first, 
I, I probably should have played a lot more than I have, and it may be the next game that I invest a decent amount of time in. Lord of the Rings Online. It's Lord of the Rings. It has an amazing music system, a fun story, great lore, and it should be getting a graphics and UI update in the next few years. Oh, and did I mention it's Lord of the f***ing Rings? Next game is going to have a lot more in common with um, Final Fantasy XIV and Guild Wars 2, except for the monetization. What the hell, Star Wars? SWTUR has some horrific monetization, but an amazing first person story, along with decently rewarding simple tab target combat with no auto attack that keeps skills tight and avoids bloat for the most part. But th that monetization and some, honestly, some content droughts really hold this game back, I believe. And how could we not end with what should have been the successor to EverQuest? EverQuest 2. It was a game that never really hit the mark for many players. EverQuest 2 to me is what WoW would have been if they didn't address some of their biggest issues. Skill bloat and exponential numbers. If you're going to try EverQuest 2, I'd recommend one of their time-locked expansion servers over the current live version. EverQuest 2 was my home for many years, and I loved the game. But the version I've logged into recently is so vastly different I don't honestly recognize it, which is a shame because the recent expansion seems very interesting. But it's still a very fun game, if dated, and you can see the history of the missteps that were taken with the game, but I still think it has a lot to offer. And it has a ton of content for you if you're starting out. Keep in mind that it is not combat like EverQuest, it's more along with the other games in this list where you have a ton of different skills, too many skills, and it's a bit more action-y although it's not action combat none of these games on this list are action combat the probably the closest one to action combat is elder scrolls online and even that's not very action combat you still have skills that you're clicking and still tab targeting you know in a way you're still here you you didn't abandon the channel yet um because i gave alternatives for everquest thank you thank you for not leaving I had a really good time with this video because it, it was my opportunity to talk about some games that I've enjoyed over the years. Every game on this list that I that I talked about, I have played some of them more than others. Like, for example, I played years of EverQuest 2 compared to just a couple months of Lord of the Rings Online. But most of the games I invested multiple years in and played through at least the base game. I can recommend all these games for at least giving a shot. And a lot of them have very low points of entry. Final Fantasy XIV has a huge trial that you can enjoy. Guild Wars 2, you can purchase the base game and just play. All the other games are all free to play games to varying degrees of content and accessibility. But take a look at them, give them a shot, or don't. Keep playing EverQuest. I'm not here to tell you what to do. I'm just here, I'm just a guy on YouTube trying to give you some other options. And also talk about a game that I've loved for 22 years. I hope you enjoy this video. If you did, please consider leaving a like right down there somewhere. It does a lot for the channel and I really appreciate you. What I'd really, really love to see is if you have other games that you really enjoy or if you've enjoyed any of the ones on this list, please tell us in the comments. Let us know what kind of games are you playing right now and what games are you waiting for? My name is Redbeard Flynn. Have a great day. I'll see you again next week.